Hello, my name is Mark Berkey and I'm an Associate Professor of Economics and I teach Economics and Statistics classes at North Carolina A&T State University. And I'm going to tell you about making educational YouTube videos with screencasting software. And even though there are a lot of universities out there through the Open Courseware Consortium and others who are putting their in-classroom lectures on YouTube and on the web in other ways, screencasting is different. Screencasting is a type of software that videos what happens on the desktop of your computer as well as your voice. And so I focus on making this low-tech, low-cost. The only equipment you need is a PC and a microphone or a USB headset. And I'm recording this lecture right now on my favorite free software called Cam Studio, but there are a lot of other programs out there you can use. Now, let me tell you how I use screencasting YouTube videos as a part of my course, and it ties into my teaching philosophy. My teaching philosophy is that the textbook is a beginning, and so I try to pick a book that's a little easier than the level of the course and I expect the students to learn most of what's in the book before they come to class. Class time is going to be dedicated to just figuring out the harder points of what's in the textbook and then building on that. And in class we go deeper in statistics and economics classes by drawing lots of tables and drawing lots of graphs a lot of solving equations, calculating, analyzing real-world data, or analyzing equations, and explaining what we've done in words and what the results mean. And a lot of textbooks don't go into as much depth in the graphing, calculating, or the explanations as I do in class. And so what I started doing is after class I would come back and I would record a quick 10 minute review, maybe a couple, one 10 minutes, one 5 minutes, or quick review of the key concepts that they can't really look up in the book, or reviewing some of the calculations that might be a little difficult for students, reviewing the explanations of what we're doing, and especially it's good for reviewing software. So I've also found that videos are great for days when I'm sick and have to cancel class, or for snow days. I want to keep my students interested and in tune with what's going on in the class so I'll send them all an email and tell them to watch a video and give them an assignment so that they don't just have a day with nothing to do. So let me show you how I use screencasting. One of the easiest things you can do is just uh, drag over a PDF file that might have some data. This is some data on SAT scores, something that college students can relate to. But then you can talk about things like percentiles, the 94th percentile, what does that mean? You can also bring in a PDF of a research paper. I like to do this for any class where my students have to analyze data and write up reports. I show them that even people with PhDs have to make nice tables with names of variables and means and standard deviations. And so it lets them see what's going on pretty clearly when you're recording what's going on on the desktop. Another key use of screencasting is with a program such as Excel, analyzing data. One of the biggest problems is you stand up at the front of the room, you go through how to use software like uh, Microsoft Excel, how to make something say like a scatter plot, and by the time they get home to do it on their own, they've forgotten how to do it. So you just quickly review. Look, uh, highlight one variable and then hold down the control key, highlight another variable, insert and scatter plot. And you review the technical, the little uh, software based aspects, but then they have to do it again with different data and tell us what do you see in this scatter plot that's really what the important part of the exercise is supposed to be another problem that I've run into sometimes is I want to go through a software program or I want to analyze something and I don't have the software on the computer in the classroom and so 
I like to go back to my office and pull up a program like Maple that might not be in the classroom where I want to discuss a three-dimensional graph and this way I can rotate the three-dimensional graph we can talk about what we're seeing here and the students can watch it on YouTube so now we've been through some ways that I use it of course you can use Word you can use PowerPoint you can go to the web if it helps your explanation. Let me give you a few last tips that I have discovered by doing this for a while now. First, feel free to go very quickly in your videos. You have to keep in mind that you don't want to bore your students and students can pause and rewind. You also want to go quickly because if you're going to post these to YouTube they have a time limit of about 10 minutes and this is actually a blessing in disguise because it keeps you on point, it keeps you short, and it keeps you from getting into long, boring explanations when you're doing a review. Third tip is I recommend when you get started, create a short five second test video each and every time because the worst thing in the world is to make a video you think you're going to be happy with only to find that your microphone is not working or unplugged. And fourth, don't expect your videos to be perfect. Do the best you can, but you want these to be, in my opinion, informal reviews as if a student's sitting in your office. And if you misspeak, it's okay. Don't worry about it. The important part is that the students will have this as a resource that they can go to as needed. So if you want to see exam more examples of how I use screencasting in my course, you can go to Berkey Academy on YouTube. A shortcut I've set up is bit.ly forward slash Berkey. And good luck making your own videos.